Welcome to the Statics and Strength of Materials, Lecture 9. We'll be discussing structures in equilibrium. Structures can be made of several connected parts. Uh, you will have situations where there are internal forces and external forces. As you can see here, we have an external force, but they're reacted by internal forces, and we, we can examine them um, to determine equilibrium. There's two categories, several categories of structures. One is trusses, which are only two force members. We'll be discussing that. These are basically straight members with endpoint connections. Here, BE is a two force member. It can only take, take tension or compression. Frames, which have three or more forces acting on a particular part. Here, you can see a part that can have three or more forces acting on it. We have machines, which are structures that, that, are, that contain moving parts designed to transmit and modify forces. Here's an example of a truss structure. Um, the truss structures uh, are typically structures where the, the bar has two ends which are pinned. Uh, and at these locations where they're pinned together, we will call them joints. For example, there's three trusses here uh, that come together at a joint and we call this a joint where the pin uh, comes together. Typically, these are idealizations of more complex structures where you have trusses that could be either welded or bolted with, or may have rivets that bring them together. Typically, uh, two force members are considered trusses. Um, here, Trusses will consist, consist of straight members connected at joints. Uh, no member is continuous through a joint. Uh, so here you have a truss connected by two pin joints at the end of the truss. Uh, typically, there's no moments or couples supported by the joint because we will consider a pin structure, a pin joint. So at point C, AC, CB, and C, D are free to rotate about C. So therefore, these are called two force members. When forces tend to pull the member apart, we call that a tension load. And when forces tend to compress it, we'll call compression load. But in general, a truss can only take tension or compression, uh, no shear loads. Here are various types of trusses that exist. We have the Pratt, the Fink, the Warren, the K Trust, the Baltimore Stadium, and other types of structures, uh, there are trusses, and they have typical names uh, for roof, bridges, and uh, other types of trusses. In the method of joints, uh, which is a method to determine um, the loads they're acting at each of the truss members, uh, the idea is to dismember the truss. Um, and create a free body diagram for each uh, of uh, each uh, member and pin. The two forces exerted on each member are equal, as we discussed before, and have the same line of action in opposite sense. Forces exerted by a member on the pins or joints at its, at its ends are directed along the member equal and opposite. You can see here, we have dismembered the truss system, and each bar here has a load acting in the it aligned um, along the structure, along, along the member. Um, you can see that for each of these uh, members, that that is the case. We have situations called special joints. If a joint consists of two collinear members, like this, and no external load is applied to this joint, the actual forces in the members are equal. So if I have a force going through here of 500 kilonewtons, then the force on the other side should be 500 kilonewtons just by straight equilibrium. If a joint consists of two non-collinear members and no external loads are applied to the joint, there's no actual force in either of the members. If a joint consists of three members, uh, two of which are collinear, 
and no external load is applied to the joint, the axial forces in the collinear members will be equal, uh, and the axial force in the third member will be zero. These are ideas that can be used to further simplify the analysis of truss systems. And what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to achieve an analysis method so that when loads are applied to these trusses, we're able to determine that the, the loads are acting in each of these trusses so we can then design them for uh, practical use. So how to deal with method of joints, which I just discussed previously, but here's an illustration of what we wanna do. Before beginning the analysis, uh, the recommendation is to draw a free body diagram for the whole system and here, for example, I have a pin, so I can substitute that by some reaction forces AX and AY. As discussed previously, uh, a pin joint does not allow movement uh, in the X or Y direction. As a consequence, we have to replace it by forces AX and AY. At point E, at joint E, this joint E cannot move in the Y direction, but it can move along the X direction. Therefore, we, we replace it with a reaction force E, and uh, this will become our free body diagram. This free body diagram can then be used to determine these loads AX, AY, and E. And once I have these reaction forces, I can now draw uh, and isolate uh, these two members, for example, at joint A. So at joint A, I can do a cut here, a cut here, and then I have the tension load or compression load along AB, truss AB, and then along AC. And so now I have uh, two unknowns, uh, and I can sum forces in the X direction, sum forces in the Y direction, and be able to determine the tensions in these two trusses. That's how you will approach this problem. Here's an example of a truss system uh, where I'm applying 400 Newtons and 800 Newtons downwards. I have a pin joint on the left, I have a roller support on the right, and how do I approach this? Well, I'll derive a free body diagram and draw it. I have a pin joint there, so I should replace it with AX and AY. I have a rotor support here, so I will replace it with an E, reaction force E. And now I can do a, a summation of forces in the X direction. And you can see here, there's no loads in the X direction, so summation forces AX is equal to zero. Summation of force in the y direction is this a y quantity plus e minus 400 minus 800. That's your second equation. And now I can sum moments about a, and that will get rid of these two reaction forces as a x and a y go through the point where I'm taking moments about. So I'm left with this e times this distance of uh, four, and so that's this term right here. I have 800 newtons times a distance of three, which is this term here. And I have 400 newtons times one meter, which is this value here. And so I can now solve for E in the third equation, substitute it into the second equation. Once I know E, I can calculate AY. Once I've done that, I'm able to find the reaction forces AY and E, and notice AX is zero from the first equation. Now I can readily do a cut right here and a cut right here, and then look at the method of joint, which is to examine joint A. At joint A, I simply have the tension force here, the tension force there. I can now decompose TAB into the Y and X directions. And so that will lend me to the first equation summation of forces in X direction is TAC plus TAB times the cosine of 60. And the second equation gives me um, the summation of forces in the Y direction, which is 500 Newtons plus TAB times the sine of 60 degrees. So this is decomposed into the Y direction. And from this equation, I can solve for TAB. Once I have TAB, I've substituted here, and I'm able to get TAC. So I'm able to find the TAB, the tension along this member right here, AB, is going to be negative 577 newtons, which means that is in compression. And then for TAC, we'll find that's in tension, so it's actually pulling on AC, okay? So this is how we will approach uh, this particular problem. So now we're gonna move into um, uh, looking at joint B. So if we go up here, 
joint base this one so I can do a cut there, a cut here, a cut here. Notice that I know the load across AB, along AB. That was found. So I know the load here. I don't know the load here or here. So when I do a cut there, I know this load is in compression. I don't know TBC. I don't know TBD. So I can now again. Uh, some force is in x direction and y direction by decomposing TBD. Uh, here, TBD does not need to be decomposed because it's aligned with the x direction. TBC can be decomposed into TBC cosine of 60, so that will be along the x direction. And TBC sine of 60, will, which will be in the y direction, negative direction. So I can sum forces in the x in the y directions and solve for TBD and TBC. And that will give me the tension loads across BD and BC, which are shown here. The values are shown here. Let's look at example number two. So we want to determine the axial forces in members AB and AC of this truss system. So the first step is to draw the free body diagram for the whole system. This is pinned, so it cannot move in the Y or X direction. So I should replace it with reaction forces AX and AY. At this roller support, I should re replace it with a reaction force B because it can move freely along the Y axis. So that, that's why I should not put a reaction force in that direction. I have this load of two kilonewtons. And now what I can do is some moments about A, point A, so then I get the, the load B, which is unknown, times six. And then I have this two kilonewtons times 10. And so that will allow me to find a, uh, that will allow me to find uh, the value of reaction B. That's one approach in solving this problem. Another approach is to sum moments about B. Uh, if I sum moments about B, I have this AX times six, AY does not cause any moments, and then I have this two cooling newtons times 10, uh, which is the way it was done here, and I can solve for AX in that manner. So again, I can solve for AX and B, some in moments about A, some in moments about B. That, that's one approach to doing it. Uh, we can sum moments in the X, some forces in the X direction, which is AX plus B is equal to zero. Nothing else is in the X direction. Sum of forces in the Y direction gives me AY plus two kilonewtons, minus two kilonewtons. So I solve for AY and I'm able to find all the reaction forces for this system. Now that I have that, I can focus my attention to this joint right here, joint A. So I found this reaction, this reaction force. I found this reaction force. Now I need to find what TAB is and TAC is. I know this angle alpha from geometry, geometry. This is six meters, this is 10 meters. So I know this angle alpha, which was found to be 59 degrees using trigonometry. Once I have that, TAC times the cosine of 59 degrees brings me, decomposes TAC into the y direction, and TAC times sine of 60 degrees, 59 degrees, decomposes that into the x direction. So I can sum forces in the x direction, I can find TAC. As sum forces in the y direction, I'm able to find TAB because TAC was found from the previous equation. And so therefore, I'm able to find that TAB has actually, in fact, zero load. This member right here has zero load. So it's doing nothing is what this is telling us. Example three. In example three, the loads uh, have this bridge and the pin supports uh, where the structure is to be attached in this manner. Um, we wanna We want to be able to determine the axial forces in these members. So that is the problem statement uh, in this problem. So while this problem looks very, very complex, uh, we can approach it by looking at joint C first. At joint C, I have a load force F going through this member as a force F is applied downwards. And so um, I can quickly draw a cut here, a cut here, and cut here to isolate joint C. I have a force TCB and TCD, um, and due to symmetry, they must be equal. And so this force F, uh, we should be able to basically draw a free body diagram to calculate the forces in CB and CD. 
And so it turns out that to be as 1.83 F, or load F, uh, that can be quickly verified by yourself. Uh, we can then draw a diagram uh, for joint B. And remember, this force was found uh, in TBC is 1.83 F. So 1.83 F, uh, I have this joint B, which we've drawn here. There's a force F going downwards, so that's that force F. We have this little TAB that can be, that needs to be found. So, and then I can decompose TAB into TAB cosine alpha, TAB sine alpha in the y direction, TBC cosine 15 degrees in the x direction, TBC sine of 15 degrees in the y direction, positive. Some of forces in the x direction, some of forces in the y direction. Recall that TBC is known, so I can solve for TAB very quickly. Uh, and once I know TAB, due to symmetry, TAB must be equal to the, this, the force inside DE. And so that's how you will approach this particular problem. And so I invite you to pause the video, kind of try to go through that yourself and see if you can get the same answers as what we have shown here. The method of sections uh, is a very uh, interesting method. And what it does is that instead of isolating a single joint, we could, we could then determine uh, a more, the results in a more efficient manner. Before beginning, it is usually advantageous to draw a free body diagram for the system to determine the reaction forces at any unknown locations where the pin supports were or the roller supports were. We can find those reaction forces and be able to solve the problem. Once you have that, the idea here is to pass planes through enough members to isolate a part or section of the truss. In doing so, uh, try to uh, pass planes through members whose actual forces are to be determined. And then we can complete the free body diagram in an easy way. So for example, here, uh, I want to determine the loads in AC and BC and BD. So what I'll do is cut across BD in this manner, across BC in this manner, sorry about that, and then cut here in AC. And so that'll give me these, these uh, forces, uh, and now I can sum moments about A, and I can try to then sum moments, some forces in the X direction, in the Y direction, and perhaps solve the problem in that manner. So that's how you approach uh, the method uh, of uh, sections. Here's another example of that. You can do a cut right here, which will produce a FCE, FBE, and FBD. That's another method, uh, the method of sections. So it's different from method of joints where I was doing isolating a single joint A or single joint B to determine the unknown forces within each of these members. Here's an example for, I have this system, which is the same example I have given earlier with the method of joints, but this time I'm, I'm gonna cut through here. And it's showing here, I'm gonna cut through here, here, and here, and that'll produce a TBD, a TBC. So again, it's a truss, so we should have a, and it's pinned on either side, so I have a load acting along the BC member, and then a cut here gives me TAC. Okay, so sum of forces in the x direction gives, has three unknowns there. In the summation of forces in the y direction gives me one unknown. So I have the 400 Newton, the 500 Newton, and this particular component, which can be decomposed into TBC sine 60. So that's that one there. I can solve for TBC. And then I should sum moments about where I have the most unknowns. Uh, I have the most unknowns here. So sum moments about B. And then I can uh, approach the problem there. Okay. So now I'm able to find TAC by summing moments of a B, and I'm able to then uh, solve for all the three unknowns. So I have three equations, three unknowns. I can solve the problem. So let's look at example five here. Uh, the horizontal members of this truss are one inch in length. Determine the actual forces in member CD, which is this one here, CJ and IJ with 100 kilonewtons applied here. So that's what we want to go and do. 
here what we're going to do is cut across C, D, C, J, and I, J. Since those are the forces we want to find, we want to find this one, this one, and that one. And I have 100 kilonewtons applied here. Uh, again, some moments in the X, some forces in the X direction, in the Y direction. For this free body diagram that we have here, some moments about J because I have the most unknowns here. And when I do that, I have three equations and three unknowns, which are the tensions in each of these uh, bars. And I'm able to solve for all the loads in each of these uh, members. Example six is to determine the axial forces in members DG, BE of this system. Now, how do I we do that when I have this bar C, G, and C interfering? Uh, so we have to be smart about how to do the cut. Uh, one approach is to cut between D and G, then between C and D, and then between C and B right here, and then B and E. So a cut that goes like this. And hopefully you can see the mouse. That's one approach, one approach to solve the problem. But first, we want to find the reaction forces. I have F to F and F. I want to find the reaction force here and here. So measuring forces in the X direction is zero. So AX is zero. Um, by inspection, I have that this is F, F. So I have four F. And so I should be able to find what AY is and K is. And if this is 4F and this is symmetric, I should expect this to be 2F and this should be 2F. But you can find that too by summing, summing forces in the y direction. I have one equation. Summing moments of a point A since I have the most unknowns there and I am able to find K. Once I know K, I can find the reaction force AY and I find that AY and K are equal to 2F, which makes sense because the loads are applied downwards is 4F and it's a symmetric structure AX is zero, so they should share equal amount of load in each of the reaction, in each of those reactions. And again, this I should have AX and AY because it's pinned, fully pinned. So how do we cut this? We cut it through DG, CD, CB, and BE. And when I do that, I'm left with a force to F here from the reaction, a force F downwards. This tension I don't know. This tension I don't know. This tension I don't know, and then this tension I don't know. So um, what we can do is to determine, um, we can determine, we notice here that uh, if I sum moments about B here, I don't have to worry about this force, this force, and any of these two forces as they go through point B. So it has the most unknowns. Take moments about B, only T, D, G is the only thing left. Uh, and this 2F, so I can sum moments about B and find the value TG. Then sum moments, some forces in the X direction, and I have TDG plus TBE equals zero. I know TDG, plug it in here, find TBE. And so you can see here that, that the DG is in compression while member BE is, is in tension. Okay, so now, uh, now finding the other loads uh, can be quickly found by the method of joints or uh, any of the methods that we had discussed previously. Let's discuss now space trusses. Space trusses uh, are elementary space structures that consist of six members connected at a joint, at four joints to form a tetrahedron. Uh, that's an elementary space structure. A simple space truss is formed and can be extended when three new members and one joint are added at the same time, you can see here, I have this uh, truss and I can add to it by this green truss as I've shown. And you can make as many complex trusses as you want. The equilibrium for the entire truss is given by the six equations which we can develop for, for uh, 3D structures. Before beginning, it's important to draw a free body diagram again to find any of the reaction forces. Then you can isolate a single joint and then apply summation forces in the X direction, in the Y direction, in the Z direction now because it's 3D. Uh, so basically apply, you can apply a vector uh, format and, and then calculate the forces in each of the, the, trusses, the trusses. Here's an example. I have a force pointed 
uh, at a particular angle. Um, and so what I want to do is determine the, the, the forces uh, in this truss system. So the first step is to realize that I have uh, that I have a system here uh, where I have these reaction forces in the A. So I have AX, AZ, and AY. Uh, here I have roller, I have also a, a, re a reaction CZ, CY, and then here I have BY. So these are the reaction forces provided by the problem statement. Submission forces in the next direction quickly gives me AX minus two equals zero. I can sum forces in the y direction, and when I do that, I can find uh, this second equation. And then sum fo forces in the z direction gives me AZ plus CZ minus one, and then I can sum moments about the location where I have the most unknowns. And so how do I do that? So I have a position vector from A to C. Okay, so I have this one right here, A to B right here and then i have a to f and so once i do that i'm able to find uh th that these coefficients must be equal to zero so that gives me cz zero this one gives me by is one and if by is one then i can solve for cy because this coefficient must be equal to zero i can solve for cy once i have those i can find a y and i can find a z so this should be a simple calculation once you have found the reaction forces in part one. Let's look at example eight here. I have a space truss that has roller supports at B, C, and D. They're all roller supports. We want to determine the forces in members A, D, B, D, and C, D, okay? How do we approach this problem? Well, first convert this uh, react these uh, supports into reaction forces. So I have a load reacting B, load reacting C, and load reacting D. Okay. So I have the coordinates of these points is given to me. Uh, I can sum forces in the y direction. I have B plus C plus D is balanced by 1,200 pounds, and they can sum moments about B about this point. Uh, when I do that, I have a react uh, a position vector R B A crosses force R B C cross the load C and R B D cross the load D. Once I do that, I have these coefficients that must be equal to zero. C can be found, D can be found now because each of these coefficients has to be equal to zero. Once I have those reaction forces, I can isolate joint D. Once I have joint D, we want to find TAD, TBD, and TCD. So the tensions or the compression along these trusses. Uh, again, I know I don't know the values, but I know the, the, the direction because I know the coordinates. So I have to find a unit vector times TAD, a unit vector times T. BD and a unit vector times TCD. Uh, once I have that, which was done here, TAD times the unit vector plus TBD times this unit vector plus this, plus 360 pounds in the J direction, which is this reaction force that was found. Once I have that, I can calculate the, I can set the I, J, and K components to zero. And I can now have, I have three equations, three unknowns, so I can solve for TAD, TBD, and TCD. So let's talk about frames and machines now. So we continue with frames and machines. Uh, such structures are called frames if they are designed to remain stationary and support loads, and machines if they're designed to move and apply loads. Here you can see a wrench uh, that applies load, so that's a machine. Typically, frames are stationary. Uh, they have one multi-force members, meaning there's more than two forces in each of uh, the members. Um, the general approach is to find the equilibrium of the structure as a whole, cut up the structure to expo expose internal forces, draw free body diagrams and some forces. 
Frames and machines are structures, they're multi-force members. Uh, again, frames are designed to support loads, are usually stationary. Machines contain moving parts and are designed to transmit and modify forces. You can uh, apply a free body diagram of the complete frame to determine the external loads acting on it. Internal forces can then be determ determined by dismembering the frame and by creating free body diagrams. We've taken here piece DA and pulled it apart and looked all the loads that could be uh, acting on it. On BE, we also have done the same thing. That's BE is a truss and it only takes axial load. You can see that there. But member CF has multiple loads acting on it. Forces on multi-force members have unknown magnitude and line of action. You can see here, we don't know exactly uh, where's the line of action. They must be represented with two unknown components. Here there's clear, clearly uh, two unknown components. Forces between connected components are equal, have the same line of action in the opposite sense, like BE. Let's look at example nine. So we want to determine the forces and couples acting on the members of the frame. Here at point A is fully fixed. At point B is a pin joint. At point C, we have it connected to a roller. Um, and so we want to determine the forces and couples. So since point A cannot move in the Y axis, X axis, or cannot rotate, we must have reaction forces that go along with it. So I have an AX and AY and a moment A uh, that is unknown because that reacts the rotation. We also have the roller support substituted by a reaction force C. And so some of forces in the AX direction gives me AX equals zero. In the Y direction gives me AY plus C is zero. And then some moments about A since I have the most unknowns and I can get C out of this. C times a thousand. Uh, which is one meters, uh, plus this couple of 200 newtons times meter gives me the AMA that I'm looking for. So I can find MA from here too. So um, you can see here the reaction AX is zero, uh, but we cannot find AYC and MA from these equations. Uh, the free body diagram of the entire frame is statically indeterminate in this case, because I have more unknowns uh, than equations. Here you have C, right? That's 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 that reaction force. I have this moment A, and then I have AY. I cannot find it. So one approach is to look at each of these members separately. Uh, at least I found the AX is zero. That, that's an improvement. I have this right here. It's a pin joint there, so replace it by BX and BY. I have AX, AY, and A. Uh, a point A, I have a moment A for this horizontal truss. So I pulled that apart, dismembered it. I have this member here, which I've also dismembered, and this pin joint uh, is replaced by a reaction force BX, BY, and I have the, the load C here. If I sum forces in the X direction, BX must be equal to zero. If I sum forces in the Y direction, get BY plus C is zero, so that's that one. And if I have some moments about B, you quickly see that now I can solve for C, which I could not do before. So once I have C, I can find BY. Once I have these two, I can now go back and solve for AY and, and C, uh, which I could not do before. And so now I can also look at equilibrium on member AB. Some moment forces in the x direction, so ax plus bx is zero, um, ay plus by is zero, and then some moments about point a, uh, so then I get by times this distance. Uh, and so, since I know by, I can find ma, and since I know by, I can find ay, and uh, so forth. So, I'm able to find all the quantities that are unknown by dismembering the truss system. In example 10, I have a frame support suspended by a weight of 40 pounds. We want to determine the forces in members A, B, C, D, so this member right here, and C, E, G, this one right here, this long one. Again, 
draw a free body diagram. And you can now suspend a weight of 40 pounds here and then determine the forces in these members. How do I do that? Free body diagram. The bottom, uh, a point A, I have a pin joint, so AX and AY. At the top, it can move in the Y direction, but not in the X. So put a reaction force D there. I have this weight of 40 pounds. Now I can determine, uh, try to determine those unknowns. So summing forces in the X direction gives me AX plus D is zero. AY plus 40 is zero, so I can find a Y out of here. Moments about A eliminates these two reaction forces, and then I have D times 18, 40 times 19, which is the second term. So I can solve for D. Once I have D, I can find a Y, a X, and I know a Y, so I can find all the reaction forces. Now I can isolate this member right here. So I know all these reactions. I, I know these are two force members, so I have a load TBE, and then I have this pin joint, so that's TCE, and I have this tension in the rope. Notice that this is 40 pounds. So the tension in this rope here must be 40 pounds. Uh, along BE, I have our force R at an angle alpha, okay? Um, and so I also have the pulley system. In the pulley system, I have uh, 40 pounds going that way, 40 points going that way. I have this joint here, GX and GY, that can be replaced. I can find that by summing forces in the X direction, summing forces in the Y direction, and I can find the loads here at this joint. Now I can sum forces in the X direction uh, for this bar here. So I have CX minus CX minus R cos and alpha. So take this R, decompose it into the X and Y direction, minus 40 pounds. And then in the Y direction, I have uh, several loads as well. CY minus R sine alpha minus 40 pounds equals zero. Okay. Uh, and, and here, what we're looking at is for the horizontal bar here. I'm sorry, not this bar, but this bar. So minus CX, minus R cos and alpha, minus 40 pounds, which is what I found from this uh, cut right here. And then I can some moments about C, so I can eliminate these reactions. And now it's easy to just find the value of R. Alpha is known since I know the angle of this bar BE. Let's look at example 11. Uh, what forces are exerted on the ball at E as a result of the 150 Newton force applied here in this plier? So I want to notice that this is a pin joint, a pin joint, pin joint, pin joint. So uh, I can decompose. I can basically isolate the top portion, and that's this one here. Uh, it's a pin joint, so that's R. Uh, I have a uh, pin joint here, so CX and CY, and I have the normal force to the bolt E. Uh, I have 100, 150 pounds applied here, uh, so I can now uh, form a free body diagram also for the bottom portion. The bottom portion is 150 pounds, Newtons, and I have this uh, reaction R acting along AB, and I have DY and DX which ends around here. I also have um, CX and CY and DX and DY for this piece right here, this piece right here. So that's this piece right here. So that's what is shown here the load E downwards applied here. So again, I have dismembered all this one piece, this one piece, and this a third piece. You also even have a fourth piece, but I'm replacing that with a load R along alpha and alpha can be determined with the trigonometry of how um, these 30 millimeters, I know seven, these 70 millimeters, I can figure that angle alpha. 
So the free body diagram of member three uh, here has only three unknown forces, so that's convenient. So we can determine R, DX, and DY from this free body diagram alone. The equilibrium equations are DX plus R cosine alpha, DX plus the R cosine alpha in the X direction uh, is equal to zero, DY minus R sine alpha plus 150 newtons, and then some moments about B, because that one uh, about this point eliminates DX and there's a reaction force, so that allows me to find DY. Once I have dy, plug it in here to find r. Once you find r, plug it in here to find dy, dx. Now that you have that, you can go back in some moments about c to determine um, the value of dx, and then some moments about c. So basically, you can use all these three diagrams together to solve for all the unknowns. I'll let you pause the video and I'll let you go through that so you can see that the operations are fairly simple. I have even more examples. I have a truss system here uh, with a thousand pounds applied downwards uh, with a ro roller down here and a pin joint here. We wanna use a method of joints to determine the force in each member of the truss. So first we want to draw a free body diagram. The pin joint here can be replaced by CX and CY. The roller here can be replaced by a load E. Then again, some moments about C to determine the value of E since that's the only unknown. And then some forces in the X direction gives me CX is zero. Some forces in the Y direction gives me CY. Once I have that, I can now draw a, 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 a free body diagram for point A. And you can see I have a load FAB and FAD. Once you have a free body diagram there, you can quickly sum forces in the X direction, sum forces in the Y direction, and find those loads. You can also find the loads at joint B by using the same method, by simply uh, taking your reaction forces and decomposing them into the x, y, and x, y, and then summing forces in the x direction, summing forces in the y direction. And again, I'll let you pause the video and go through this, but you can also isolate joint E, and then you have this force, you have this force, and this unknown, so you can solve for this unknown. So basically go joint by joint until you solve for all the forces throughout. Example 13 looks like a, a system like this, a pin joint here, you have roller here, a bunch of loads applied everywhere. And so again, we want to determine the loads in members FH, this one right here, GH and GI. The first step is to take the entire truss as a free body diagram. So you have a pin joint here and a load up here. So some moments about it to get rid of that gives you the ability to find this reaction force here. And we find that the reaction for the force are 7.5 kilonewtons. Once you have there that one, you can solve for the reaction force going upwards on point A, which is 12.5 kilonewtons. Once you have these two loads, you can now do a method of cuts, method of sections cut right through here. Once you have that, you have uh, the loads going F, FH, FGH, FGI, and then the loads uh, one kilonewtons. Here is one kilonewton, and then I have the 7.5 kilonewtons. If you sum moments about H, which is the one that has the most unknowns, I can find the load FGI. You can see that there. And then once I have that, I can now solve uh, for summation of forces in the X direction, summation of forces in the Y direction to find the other loads as shown here. 
uh, or you can sum moments about G, sum moments about L. So there's a lot of different ways to approach the problem to solve for all these forces. Again, I'll let you pause the video and see how this was done. Example 14 is uh, uh, an example of a complex uh, system. I have a pin joint here, a roller here, and then load applied to 480 newtons. We want to find the loads in members ACE and BCD and the linked DE. Again, reaction forces here, reaction force here, summation forces in the Y gives me AY. Summation forces in the X direction gives me that B plus AX is zero. So B plus AX is zero. And then some moments about A allows me to solve for B. So I'm able to find all these reaction forces. Once I have that, I can isolate this member BCD, which is shown here at 480 newtons here. I find a reaction force there. I know that FDE, there's a two two force member, so the load must go along FDE. Okay. And so now that I have that, some moments about C allows me to find FDE. And then some forces in the X direction allows me to find CX. And some forces in the Y direction allows me to find CY. Example 15 is yet another example of a machine. Uh, here's a simple problem that can be quickly determined. Um, again, simple problem. I've drawn uh, a particular design. is slightly similar to the example I did before, but the design is, is a little, little bit different. I apply load P. is reacting load Q. So I can now draw a single piece here. I have a pin joint there. Q downwards, P downwards. So I, I can uh, sum moments about A. And once I do that, I find that AP minus BQ is zero. So I can, with the distance A and B and the load P, I can find Q. So that concludes uh, the examples for uh, this material.